All right, Ty, this is Dr. Hagmeyer, and uh, we're back today. And one of the things I want to share with you is another common question that I often uh, am asked, and that is, how did I develop this autoimmune condition? And what I would say is, well, it's really a combination of a couple things. It's a combination of your lifestyle, it's a combination of genetics, it's a combination of medications that you've taken in the past, but also maybe right now. And it also, it's a combination of the kind of foods you're eating, okay? In the last video, we talked specifically about gluten. There are many other different kinds of foods as well that can be problematic, uh, that can also be a part of, of triggering an autoimmune condition. Um, and so those are all important things that need to be investigated, okay? But here's the thing. We all know that genetically, uh, we may be at risk for, certain, for developing certain kinds of diseases, um, maybe things like thyroid disease or celiac disease or diabetes. Um, so in other words, you know, if you had a mom that had a thyroid condition and your grandmother had a thyroid condition and you have some siblings that have a thyroid condition, there is that genetic propensity uh, that you could develop a thyroid condition, okay? But, but here's the big thing. With that being said, we can't blame it on genetics, okay? It's the uh, involvement or it's the interaction of the choices that we make every day uh, as well as, uh, you know, the, the decisions that we make with our genetics, okay? So I want to be very, very clear about that. You know, the lifestyle that we have, the foods we eat, the medications we take, the environmental exposures to the world we live in, these are the things that turn on genes, okay? So genes just don't turn on by themselves, okay? Um, so I want to spend uh, some time talking about some of the environmental factors that uh, you can modify, things that you have control over. And one of them is obviously cigarette smoke, okay? Um, you may not realize this, but in cigarette smoke alone, there are over 519 different chemicals. Uh, and that's just in cigarette smoke. And then there's all things like pesticides, all right? Pesticides are used on our lawns. They're used in our home gardens. Uh, they're in the vegetables that some of us might be consuming if we're not buying organic produce. Uh, they're all over the place, okay? So, um, you know, we have to be cognizant of that. We have to be aware of that, okay? So other chemicals that are, that are toxic to the thyroid gland include fluoride, I'm going to say that again, fluoride, that's the stuff that you brush your teeth with, okay? That's the stuff that's also often found in our water supply, okay? So the fluoride that's found in drinking water, toothpaste, even dental treatments, okay? In fact, just a couple months ago, the American Dental, uh, dental Association released uh, an email alert to all its members warning that in order to prevent tooth damage, fluoridated water shouldn't be mixed into formula or, or foods intended that babies would be eating anywhere between one years old and younger, okay? So even the American Dental Association is starting to, to understand that they can't cover up the, this fluoride problem anymore, okay? Many countries, in fact, outside of the United States, Florida is completely banned, okay? It's, it's a known problem with thyroid, okay? So we know it causes thyroid disorders. In fact, if you just Google thyroid problems in fluoride, I'm sure you can find, you know, a gazillion uh, different uh, research articles, okay? So how exactly does fluoride affect thyroid function? Okay, so something you gotta know here is that fluoride is a very chemically reactive particle, okay? And that means it can displace other minerals uh, in storage sites within the body, okay? So take, for example, the thyroid gland. Fluoride can prevent iodine from playing uh, its proper role in synthesizing or making T3 and T4 hormones. Now, you're gonna remember that T3 is really nothing more than a tyrosine molecule with three iodine particles. And T4 is a tyrosine molecule now with four iodine particles. And what happens is very often we consume fluoride and now fluoride is going to compete with those receptor sites uh, that fluoride is, is taking up or that iodine should be taking up. Fluoride is going to displace iodine. Uh, fluoride can also affect TSH output, okay? So TSH is that thyroid stimulating hormone. We know that consuming fluoride um, can affect the pituitary gland. We also know that fluoride can interfere with the conversion of T4 hormone into the active T3 thyroid hormone, okay? So many dentists uh, have now acknowledged the, the problems that are associated with fluoride and, and the health problems associated with it. So many dentists even choose not to use fluoride treatments anymore, okay? Just like dentists no longer, many dentists I should say, not all of them, but many dentists no longer use mercury fillings, okay? So again, um, that's something to, to realize when it comes to thyroid. So. What are some of the other chemicals that may interfere with proper thyroid function? Well, the latest chemical that, that's really hitting the news is something called BPA. And BPA stands for bisphenol A, okay? And this is used in a lot of the plastics. Uh, it's an extremely toxic thyroid gland disruptor. 
Uh, it can trigger Hashimoto's disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It can also uh, trigger many other different kinds of autoimmune problems, okay? And um, BPA is actually known to be what's called an endocrine disruptor, okay? What are some of the other triggers, okay? So another trigger uh, that you've been hearing about uh, lately is iodine, okay? Believe it or not, if you have uh, a thyroid problem, you probably have heard or are aware of how important iodine is to the thyroid. And although it may be important if you don't have Hashimoto's, if you do have Hashimoto's, iodine can, can be a major, major trigger. In fact, iodine has been called um, or referred to as uh, putting gas on the fire, okay? Um, I've done an entire video on how dangerous iodine is for people that have Hashimoto, so uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it in this video, but I would say go back and watch some of the other videos at, at a later date and time. The other thing to understand about iodine, and I just got off the phone with a, a lady earlier this, uh, this afternoon, was that she has uh, Hashimoto's, and in the uh, multivitamin that she was taking, it had iodine in it, and a couple of the other uh, supplements that she was taking, it had kelp. Uh, in it, or she had uh, something in it with bladder rack in it. So again, anything with iodine, kelp, or bladder rack is something you want to avoid if you have an autoimmune condition, okay? So what it all boils down to is that there are obviously chemicals in the environment. There are um, obviously chemicals in our environment and uh, in our bodies. And uh, there are chemicals that are found in the supplements that we take uh, that can be triggering this autoimmune response, okay? So again, this is why it's so important that you're going to want to work with a doctor who's really going to look at the big picture and really go above and beyond just looking at TSH and T4, okay? So I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I hope you enjoyed today's health tip. Take care.